Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scooter Buyo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 15W39B of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC edition. Uh, and um, uh, this is probably going to be my last video on item elevators for a while. Um, uh, not because I've run out of interest in exploring this, I think it's a, a lot of fun, but I'm about to get busy at work. So um, uh, this will have to do it for the time being. Um, in my last video, uh, I uh, took a look at Snow Crash's design for an uh, for an item elevator, and uh, I really liked it. Um, it had a couple of issues uh, that I was trying to tackle. Um, uh, items were glitching out of it sometimes, and and I wanted to try to get rid of this clock. Uh, I was able to uh, fix both of those things, but it created this just ugly mess down here. Um, and so I, I thought I'd take a, a look and see if there was a way to simplify the redstone a little bit. Uh, and um, and so this is what I came up with. Um, <laughs> it, he uses hardly any redstone at all. There's a, there's a, a little bit of stuff down here. I'm actually going to reduce this a little bit further in a bit. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I like this. I, I call this my uh, make mumbo proud moment. <laughs> uh, so I, I, uh, I really simplified the redstone, but it all uh, still has the same functionality, uh, and it's only a couple blocks below the actual water channel. Everything stays down here. There's nothing, nothing else below that. Uh, now I have um, uh, tested this a little bit uh, with some moderate item flows. Everything seems to be working fine. Um, but the more I was working with this, uh, the more there was something that was kind of bothering me about it. And, and I finally figured out what it is. And it's these two uh, cobblestone uh, walls that are connecting there. Uh, so let me uh, take a look at these here. I'm going to just put a three cobblestone wall down at an angle. Uh, and I'm going to do the same for uh, for fence posts, uh, for fences here. All right, now uh, fences have been nicely fixed. Uh, um, uh, apparently, the uh, one of the a lot of the glitchiness with uh, fences is gone. Um, uh, but one thing that you'll note here is that the the hitbox of the fence post uh, changes according to what it's connected to. So you can see down there, it's uh, it's extending into the corner of its block. Uh, over here, this one, however, is uh, is much narrower, and the same thing is with the uh, these cobblestone walls. So this uh, the hitbox of this cobblestone wall is considerably larger than this one. Uh, now, uh, that doesn't mean that the collision boxes are the same. So uh, I can still move into the corner of this uh, this fence uh, of this fence here, the one with the larger uh, hitbox, and uh, I can still move inside, uh, but for cobblestone walls, that's not the case. I can't move into that uh, sort of open corner. So there still seems to be a little bit of an issue with collision boxes for cobblestone walls. I'm not quite sure how that's going to play out in the future, uh, uh, but um, I, I wanted to uh, take a little bit stronger look and see if there was a way uh, to deal with, uh, to make this work with fence posts, um, which supposedly are a little bit more stable at this point. Uh, the cobblestone walls are nice because their collision uh, uh, their collision boxes are bigger than fence posts, so, so they're easier to work with. Um, but um, I, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with them, so I, I'm going to try to do this with fence posts. Um, uh, that means, uh, however, that I, I need to take some of the things that I've learned uh, from uh, trying to fine-tune the position of item landings uh, in here for the place where they go up the glass tower. Uh, and uh, and so I'm going to actually uh, uh, tweak this design a little bit. Uh, so for the first thing is I'm going to get rid of the double cobblestone wall. And I'm going to have a fence post back there, just like we had with um, uh, test 137029's design. Uh, so a fence post in back. Uh, but here I want to, um, uh, instead of a cobblestone wall or another fence post, I'm going to have a full block. So I've just uh, stuck a block of glass there. Uh, and now I no longer need staggered timing, so I don't have to have uh, this piston that used to be over on the side, I moved it down. Uh, this piston doesn't have to fire after this one anymore. Uh, so I can uh, remove uh, some delay that uh, exists here. Uh, get rid of that and uh, move that torch over here. I'll, I'll explain uh, how, how to build this up in, in just a bit. Um, so I've uh, now these pistons have the same delay. 
Uh, and uh, that simplifies the redstone underneath a little bit. Uh, it'll just simplifies the overall design. And it also uh, has the advantage of making it a little less noisy because uh, the pistons are firing in sync with one another uh, rather than staggered. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the, um, the last thing that I need to do here is I need to ensure that items coming along in this stream are landing in the appropriate position where this fence post is. So when this piston retracts this block, uh, the fence post doesn't have anything to connect to. And I want the items to slide up right next to the fence post uh, so that when this block gets pushed back, uh, the new collision box of the fence post uh, allows those items to go up. Uh, and f for that to happen, I just need to take this block of ice here and I need to just put back a regular block. Uh, and those are all the changes that uh, I really need to make uh, to this. Um, and uh, I, there's, um, I have a, a special kind of regulator down here. I'm going to build out this one, but then I'm going to replace it with a different one uh, as I show you how to build all this out. Uh, okay, so here is the standard, uh, um, uh, you know, kind of what exists now in 1.8. This is uh, the type of item elevator that everybody uses. I've just stripped away the walls for the water channel. Uh, and uh, the modifications that I need to make to this are, are pretty minor. Uh, I'm going to remove this first fence post. Um, and I'm eventually going to want to put a pressure plate on this, uh, this block right here. Um, but I can't put a pressure plate on regular ice, uh, so I need to replace this with packed ice. Now, uh, in order to prevent uh, uh, baby zombies from spawning in the redstone platform uh, underneath, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just replace uh, all four blocks of ice here with packed ice. Uh, packed ice is an opaque block, so um, it uh, changes the spawning behavior of things underneath it. Uh, so I've replaced those blocks of ice with packed ice and I've removed one fence post and that's pretty much the only modification I've made at this point. Uh, and now I need to uh, create a little platform where I'm going to be putting my redstone stuff. And so I'm just going to go down a couple of blocks and with one block of space uh, in between the, um, uh, the ice of the water channel, I'm going to build out a five by three platform. So three wide and five deep. There we go. Uh, and uh, my pressure plate is going to go on this uh, second block of ice down here. Here's, uh, here's a break, and we've got uh, two blocks of ice, uh, or four blocks of ice on the second block uh, coming down the direction of the water stream. I put a pressure plate, and then I'm going to want to take a signal off of that pressure plate uh, on the block underneath uh, on this uh, platform down here. I need a repeater set on four ticks going into a block, and on that block I want to put a redstone torch. On the other side, on the inside of the bend, uh, um, uh, where this uh, redstone wire is underneath the pressure plate, uh, I want to place a block on either side, a dot of redstone here, and another repeater on four ticks, with a redstone torch right here. Okay, almost done with the redstone. Um, where this dot of redstone is, I, I want to kind of box that off and put another redstone torch right on top uh, so that the redstone to torch is at the same layer as the ice. Okay, it's time to go ahead and put in pistons. Uh, so on uh, this block right here facing up, I need a piston. There we go. That extends because of that redstone torch. Uh, over here next to this redstone torch, I need another piston facing up. That one's going to extend. And then over here, it's a little bit hard to hit without breaking any blocks, but it can be done. Um, on top of this redstone torch over here, I want a piston facing into this glass block, and that will extend and push the glass block over the ice. There we go. Okay. Uh, now it is time to go ahead and add in the walls of my water channel. Just going to put those back. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to put the water back. 
Now the pressure plate prevents the water from continuing along, um, but I still want water to be uh, flowing here, so I'm going to put a water source block on the other side of the trap door. Uh, this water is not flowing, but when this piston retracts the glass block there, the water will flow into the space, um, so that will help push items in. Uh, now this piston here uh, pulls down this block, which has water on top of it, and unless I put blocks on either side, uh, the water is going to spill out. Um, uh, but even so, um, I, I, those are the only two blocks uh, there that are necessary, but I'm just going to fill in this uh, just for aesthetics. Okay, um, there we have it. So uh, now when I toss an item in, goes over the pressure plate. The two pistons over here fire. Um, that item ends up colliding with the toggleable uh, collision box uh, of the uh, fence post uh, and goes up the glass. Uh, at the same time, uh, this block here retracts, creating a trap for any, uh, any additional items coming in. And when the trap goes up, any of the items that got stuck here will continue on over. Uh, now the problem with this is that um, when this trap goes down, I mentioned this in previous videos, when this block goes down it actually creates too high, flowing, uh, too high water uh, and that means that this can't be built uh, between layers 46 and 62 or squid will spawn in here and if squid spawn in here then they can end up you know, getting stuck on the pressure plate and doing all kinds of stuff. So. Um, uh, I'm going to change that a little bit so that instead of a um, uh, instead of a trap, I'm going to create a kind of a stopper. And for that, I need to move this piston up by one. So I'm going to remove that piston and remove this torch. And I need uh, to extend this platform uh, by one there. And I'm going to quickly break this block here and place a piston underneath so that water is not flowing all over and uh, put the block back. Okay, now I've got my piston right there. I'm going to put a, a dot of redstone here. This is where the torch was. I'm going to put a dot of redstone right here. And I'm going to put a block right there. And this uh, repeater that was uh, set on four ticks, I'm going to set it on one tick. Okay. And now when I throw, a, uh, throw an item in, it's turned into a stopper uh, rather than a trap. Uh, and uh, let me go ahead and uh, quickly convert this one over here. So that we can see uh, see how that works, because I don't have a, an item, a dropper set up for this other one over here. Okay, so redstone block there and set on one tick. There we go. Uh, and I think that's all been converted the same. So, uh, so they're identical. Um, I just have uh, my standard dropper spitting out five items per second uh, loaded with a bunch of stuff here. Uh, and uh, we can see how this works. There we go. Um, if things get stuck on top of the stopper, that's fine. And you'll also notice sometimes items uh, get kind of stuck on the bare ice blocks, that nether star there. Um, they do come really close to getting stuck on the pressure plate. Uh, but if they're moving slow enough across here that they would get stuck over in the pressure plate on this side, um, they don't get there before the pressure plate deactivates and the stopper goes down, causing the water to push them across. Uh, and if they are traveling really slowly over the pressure plate, eventually they hit this water block here and uh, and find their way uh, off the pressure plate and uh, into the uh, into the uh, collection area there. Uh, and uh, so this actually works pretty well. I, I haven't had uh, there are a lot of visual glitches with this. I, it uh, appears that items are kind of flying all over the place uh, when I've been doing my trials here. Uh, but they all seem to make it up to the top. I, I've never, uh, I haven't had any loss uh, with this yet. So uh, I also have not subject this to a huge amount of, um, of uh, testing. Um, so I, I've tested it with some moderate volumes here, you know, obviously tested it with one-off uh, one items. Um, but uh, I, I 
probably need to subject this to uh, much more rigorous testing, especially in um, chunks that get reloaded and, and um, uh, outside of uh, view range and, and this kind of stuff. So uh, it does require some significant testing, I think, uh, to ensure that this is bulletproof. Uh, but it does use very little redstone, uh, and um, I've also ensured that uh, these pistons, which are now uh, pretty much all synchronous, uh, so you, there's only three piston noises um, in the operation of this per batch of items that goes across, so uh, it's relatively quiet. Um, if you're looking for a design that is um, uh, is less... Uh, redstone intensive. Um, I, I know that SC Petty has a has a, a really low resource design uh, where pistons are launching the items, and he uh, he takes care to make sure that those items don't have any uh, velocity by the time the pistons push them. So uh, so that's a, a lossless as well. Um, that type of design works really well if you don't need a ceiling. Uh, for the uh, collection area here, if um, uh, if you can just uh, you know let the items fly up to the build height, um, uh, this is uh, a more resource intensive, and there's going to be a, a lot more uh, redstone uh, updates that are going on. Um, but it will work if you need a ceiling on on top of your collection area. Uh, that is it then for this video, I think. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, please leave a note in the comments, and thank you for watching.